my claim about this whole category of moral philosophy, the whole ethical and political approach of utilitarianism, um, is not that it's meaningless, but that it is irrelevant to ethical questions, to questions of right and wrong, questions of whether or not we should do the right thing just because it's the right thing to do. Now, my biggest disagreement with Eisel with regard to ethics is in the derivation of his ethics rather than the ethics themselves. So firstly, Eisel dismisses ideas like maximizing net happiness or minimizing suffering as meaningless or worthless. I know we can't accurately measure these things, but I think we can estimate them. And these estimations are essential to ethical judgments and arguments. So my claim is that the sphere of deontology, sphere of ethical philosophy and making decisions about what we're going to do and what we're going to do, is separate from, is not overlapping with, the sphere in which we could ask in a meaningful and useful way these questions about net happiness. Torture. The military and the police using torture. Is it ethically acceptable to torture one person in order to extract information, in order to compel a confession that could save the lives of 100 people? So typical scenario, still today in 2019, the police or the military are asking themselves whether or not they should torture someone who is a suspected terrorist because there is the possibility that this will reveal information that will save 100 people's lives, that it will prevent a terrorist attack. Okay. This is an ethical question. This is a matter of deontology. This is a matter of right and wrong. This is a matter of doing the right thing because it's the right thing to do. So from my perspective, this kind of uh, pleasure-pain calculus, which is the original terms used by John Stuart Mill, this idea of net happiness is totally irrelevant, okay? Either procedurally torture is correct or incorrect. Either this person is innocent until proven guilty and has the right to a trial and the right to remain silent, or they do not. I mean, there are all kinds of ethical questions to be asked here, and even procedural and bureaucratic and legal, okay? But there is no question to be asked. There is no salience, there is no relevance of taking this abstract equation whereby you have an imaginary amount of pleasure and enjoyment and then you subtract the amount of suffering and pain and then ask, well, how much is left over? What's, <laughs> is it a positive or negative number at the end of the equation? Absolutely by definition, any evil whatsoever can be justified by this equation. Now, net Happiness. Think about the meaning of the word net. It's like net profit. Okay? So net profit. You earn a certain amount of money and it costs you a certain amount of money. You lose a certain amount of money. So you subtract the losses from the profits and what do you get? You get the net, net, net income, net profit, what have you. Okay? Uh, in the same way, you're talking about some posited quantity of happiness or enjoyment or well-being and then subtracting the misery, the harm, the torture, the suffering you inflict, whatever it may be. Any evil whatsoever can be justified this way, including killing cows in order to eat their flesh. There, there's, there's no end to it. Okay? <laughs> what about taking taxpayers' money to build a casino? Right? There's suffering caused by a casino. Poor people are going to get poorer. People are going to lose money. People's lives are going to be destroyed by gambling addiction. There's also the actual use of resources, of taxpayers' money, when you could have been building something else, these negative things. But then what? who can quantify the enjoyment? Who can, who can quantify how much happiness this casino will bring to the people? How much entertainment and gambling and maybe there'll be music and dancing and alcohol and cigars and there's going to be a fancy hotel? You can... <laughs> You can inflate uh, in your own mind's eye, in your imagination, in your estimate, the supposed pleasure being created by this casino, and it can justify any amount of pain. What about torturing someone to death in order to build a casino? <laughs> what are the units of this calculus? It's completely surreal. Now, uh, again, coming back to my original premise here, I'm not actually claiming that this line of reasoning 
is completely meaningless or completely useless. I think it is only meaningful and useful when we're entirely outside of the domain of these ethical questions. So to give an example, um, if you have a museum and you're going to put on an exhibition of art, like you're going to do this anyway, it's already been established. Let's say the government assigned a certain budget. The government says, okay, you have $10 million to put together an art exhibition. Now, do you want to put on an exhibition of ancient Egyptian art or 17th century French art? Or do you want to do an exhibition on dinosaurs? Let's just say hypothetically, this, this museum, you're going to use the same gallery, you got $10 million. You, in this context, it may be that it's meaningful to ask about net happiness. It may be meaningful to think in utilitarian terms, like, well, do people here really care about ancient Egypt? How many people will attend this? How many people will enjoy this? Maybe also, what is the educational value? I mean, okay, a lot of children like dinosaurs, but are they really going to learn anything if we do another dinosaur exhibition? Uh, as opposed to the educational value of talking about ancient Egypt or something. There can be contexts like this where I think ethical and political questions are frankly banal, where this kind of pleasure pain calculus, this kind of concept of net happiness may be meaningful. If it is a foregone conclusion that the government is going to build a sports stadium, so for whatever reason there's hundred million dollars that'll go into building the sports stadium. You have no, that's, there's no question about that. There's no option here to take the hundred million dollars and instead feed homeless people. Hundred million dollars have been set aside to build a sports stadium. And then you are going to ask the question, should we build a basketball stadium or should we build an ice hockey arena with this budget? So you can imagine that may be a context in which you are really asking questions that very closely resemble net happiness. You're going to look at, okay, how many people within this city, how many people really enjoy hockey, how many enjoy basketball, what, what are going to be the impacts on these sports and for people as, as spectators and as athletes, uh, maybe what's going to be the impact on the local university or something. So there are contexts in which the greatest happiness of the greatest number of people is a meaningful question and can even be a useful metric and where we can agree on even the units that make up the total number in this calculus. Like it may be the unit is how many people would buy tickets to attend a sports event or to go to a museum or to see a movie. There may actually be arithmetically real measurable units of human enjoyment involved and we may be able to think in these terms. What's bizarre and tragic and surreal is that this ultimately misguided, economistic way of thinking, it's a pseudo-economic way of thinking, has been applied to questions in political science, uh, politics, ethics, morality. It's been applied to questions where it has absolutely no validity. Da -da 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 -da.